Welcome to this third video of a three-part series here at MWC in Barcelona. And we are here with Richard Chin, and I'm very excited to talk to you in this series called Better Connected here at MWC. So Richard, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you on this series. Please, as usual on my videos, I would love if you give us a little bit introduction of yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Richard, uh, Richard Jin. I'm from Huawei. Uh, I look after the Huawei transmission product line, including the microwave and the WDM. Okay. I mean, let's talk a little bit about the challenges you see when you talk to customers. You talk to a lot of uh, key clients from, from Huawei. And what do you see are, the, let's say, the main challenges when you implement the 5G backhaul? Actually, uh, for the 5G network, definitely includes 5G run and 5G new call. However, for the backhaul is uh, very critical for the 5G. Because without 5G backhaul, you cannot implement the 5G network. For the 5G backhaul, it in if there is fiber, you can use fiber IP plus WDM to realize the backhaul. However, if there is no fiber, or fiber is not planted, you must use microwave. This is biggest challenge for operators because as before, the microwave cannot address the high capacity for the uh, backhaul. We need the innovative 5G microwave solution to address the high bandwidth and the low latency. So when you look at, say, the main areas of use of the backhaul of the 5G microwave, what would those be? It's a good question. Actually, uh, according to our research, uh, currently over 75% base station still based on the macro. And even in the next five years, there are still over 70% base station will be backhauled by uh, macro. And that means macro is uh, playing a very critical role in the 5G era. And uh, especially in uh, many countries, they are not so in plenty of you know, fiber uh, deployment. I think even in, in West Europe, in many countries, for example, in, in Germany, we discussed with one operator. They told us there are still over 70% base station. There is no fiber. They need the good solution based on the microwave mm -hmm. to realize the backhaul. So when you look at, let's say, the roadmap of the 5G microwave, what does it look like and what value does it add to the customer? For the 5G microwave, currently in the microwave industry, we are focusing to provide the, the good solution from uh, Huawei and other microwave players. And for us, we try to launch the 5G microwave to support the 5G uh, to become mm -hmm. reality. And this year, we will launch commercially the 5G microwave based on the traditional band and E-band. For the customers, we, we think we can provide a lot of uh, business values, including the antenna, audio, and indoor uh, unit. For example, for the antenna, we can provide the modular antenna solution. Mm -hmm. It can easily upgrade the single polar polarization antenna to dual color uh, polarization, or it can upgrade from one frequency to another frequency. No need to change the dish. And it can save a lot of cost for our customers. Secondly, uh, for the audio, we can provide the high capacity audio solution, and it can save the tower space a lot, and it can save the rental fee for our customer. And we can provide a, a MIMO solution as well, and it is very, very useful in uh, some region because the spectrum fee is very, very expensive for them. If they adopt the MIMO solution, they can provide four times capacity with the current spectrum bandwidth and without uh, extra spectrum fee to pay. 
when you look at, let's say, the different stages of implementing 5G, um, you recently you just mentioned in one of your talks that you know the goal is to reach the mat mature stage where we have a very high data volume that can be transmitted, but also very low latency. And what do you think when we will reach that stage? Last year, the 3GPP just the standardized the the 5G non-standard mm -hmm. alone, and this year is the beginning to deploy the 5G network. This is the beginning stage of 5G. And I think in three years later, uh, after 2020, yep. the 5G will enter into the mature stage. And uh, uh, in the beginning of 5G era, uh, bandwidth requirement is not so huge. However, for the 5G mature stage in the urban area, it need uh, bandwidth requirement should be uh, uh, 10 Gbps. Mm -hmm. For the suburban and rural area, the bandwidth should be over 2 Gbps. We uh, try to uh, provide the solution to address this requirements. Mm -hmm. To wrap up this interview, I would like to talk to you about um, the results that you presented here at MWC now uh, as part of the POC that you did with uh, some of your clients. So it would be very interesting for me to hear some of these results that you can present today um, regarding the commercial 5G um, microwave. Yeah, uh, we uh, did the joint innovation test with uh, our strategic partner in, uh, in Europe. The test result shows we can provide over 5G BPS capacity on the traditional band with CA and uh, dual polarization technology. And we can provide 20G BPS capacity. And the most important thing is now our 5G microwave can provide a very, very low latency. This is very, very critical and very useful mm -hmm. for our customers. And uh, we have already verified those performance. Mm -hmm. Good. So I'm very excited to see like they're actually becoming mainstream and commercialized. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for being with me here today at MWC in Barcelona. And thank you very much, everybody who tuned in for this three-part series of the Better Connected series with Huawei. And make sure if you didn't see the first and the second video to go back and tune in and check them out. They were very interesting. And I'll see you soon, hopefully, from another new series. Have a great day.